You want to level up your Hasselblad with accessories? Yeah, I didn't want to um, include What's Her Face's song because I want to keep my coin. We all like Sierra Mist, but you know. Me. Hello. It's me. I'm Stephen Allen. How are you doing today? Hit the subscribe button if you like vintage cameras and let me know which one is your favorite. We're going to be talking more about vintage cameras on this Chanel, this channel. So subscribe. I was trying to make a joke saying Chanel. It didn't land. Did not land. Oh well. Subscribe. I got this Hasselblad years ago. I got it from B&H, that great store in New York City, and I was actually looking to get a Rolleiflex camera, but the person at the store said, we don't have one of those right now, but we do have a Hasselblad, and I think you would like it a lot more. And so he showed me this camera, this lens. This is one of my favorite cameras, one of my favorite cam. Roz. I want to shoot more with it. I just love that it's modular. I love that you can put different film backs on it. You can put digital backs on it. You can shoot 35 millimeter film with this camera if you use a little adapter with it. It's just a, it's a great fancy nifty little device. It's my favorite. Hassle blad, not hassle bad. I guess it could be like hassle bad, you know, like good bad, whatever. There's so much you can do with this camera. It's just a limit less. There's so much life in this camera. I hope the person that owned this camera before me was not racy, because I didn't like cleanse it. You have to do that. If you get used items, make sure you cleanse it. You know, cleanse the spirits from it, because it might have some racy tendencies to it. And you don't want that to get on your hands. You don't want it to get into your your system into your feelings. You don't want that. So I do have another video about this camera. If you're interested in watching that, you should be interested in watching that. I have a card right here, right there. It's also in the description. It's about how you can shoot Instax with this camera, this Hasselblad, using a Polaroid film back. There's also another film back that is in development and it's in that video. So watch it, watch this video first and then go over there and watch that video. Have fun with my channel. Thank you. Let's talk about the accessories. Fun, you can get extra film backs for this camera. So this is a A24 film back. So this film back is for 220 film and they do have 120 film backs but you are able to shoot 120 film in this 220 film bag. A lot of people think you can't do that. You can do that. I can make a video about that if you're interested in seeing how that works. It's a little different. You have to like know a few things about how this camera, this film bag works when you're shooting 120 film in this film bag, but it's definitely possible and doable. Beautiful as beautiful. And you think that's all that matters? Oh, hurry up and get in bed, will you? This is another 220 film back. All of the 120 film, that's what you can actually get today, all of it will be exposed in this six by six square. Maybe you have a different film speed in this film back than this film back, or maybe you have color film in this film back, or maybe you have black and white film in this film back. So it's nice that you can have different film backs and have different film stocks in them. You can also get other film backs, which this one is an a16s and you can see it's a little bit different this film bag was developed so that you could shoot medium format slides with it but i use this with a little adapter inside so that i can shoot 35 millimeter film so you can see this little adapter here these are just 3d printed little knobs you stick it on your 35 millimeter film but yeah when you shoot with this, you're going to get what is called sprocket film. So the sprockets will get exposed to. It's an interesting look. It's fun. I would not suggest shooting your regular 120 film in one of these because then you're just losing out on a little bit of, you know, area that you could expose. You just get a smaller image for the negative. If I were to use one of these film backs with the 35 millimeter film, you'll have a really long, because the film actually goes this way, you'll have a vertical, a really like a 
panoramic but vertical for your 35 millimeter film and then you'll just it's long it's like a really long portrait so this makes it a little more square it's not fully square but it's a little more square you get me you feel me you understand good you can also put one of these on your camera you are actually able to get 16 frames as an a16 film back instead of the normal 12 with your 6x6 so if you want to squeeze a few extra frames in and you want to shoot landscape or portrait you can use this film back you can also shoot with a polaroid film back i do have a separate video about that so <laughs> Super fun. What's also nice about this camera is that you can stick a digital back on this camera. This is an old camera from like the 50s, the 60s. This is old, old, but it's built like a tank. This is the Phase 1 H10, but this one you have to tether to your computer. So this is kind of a studio only film back. You could possibly plug this into a laptop and use it on the go, but that would make it kind of difficult to use. And you could see that the actual sensor here is smaller, kind of similar to 35 millimeter film, that negative that you would get. This is a phase one P20. I like that this sensor is square. People really rave about the P25. I like this P20 because I like the square sensor. You're shooting Hasselblad. Why not keep it square? I wanna make some videos shooting with this digital back. So subscribe to this channel so you can see those. Oh, and make them out. Fun stuff. Uh, one thing that is really cool to put on here is a lens hood. It's really nice to have a little lens hood. I wanna talk a little bit about this because when you have a lens hood on your Hasselblad, you wanna line up this little red dot here so that it will be straight on there. It makes the camera look a little, you know, more legit, but it also helps with the glares that you can get from the sun or from lights when you're shooting. The issue is... I've been in love several times before. You know, you can have your lens cap. This won't actually engage, you know, with the lens hood on. And then often when you get a lens hood, it's like this one works where you can't put the lens hood on but you could possibly this is what i was doing for a while until i could find an actual lens cap that works with this hood i was just putting this down here and putting a little bit of gaff tape to keep it down but if you're on the go outside shooting that's annoying if you were going to use a lens hood make sure you get a lens cap that's like this so that you can use your hood and your lens cap at the same time. I was looking at some forums online trying to figure out the name of this, of a cap that could possibly work with it. I didn't even know if they had an option of a lens cap that could work with a lens hood for, you know, this system. And people were saying like, just use a lens hood. You don't need a lens cap. What? So I'm letting you know, this is it. There's not like an actual name that I could find. It just says 51640 front lens cap 50. Make it easier on yourself. Do that, do that. Another thing that you could look into are these little filters here. So this helps you to do some close focusing with your Hasselblad because the minimum focus distance for this particular lens is three feet. And you think like, well, that works, but whenever you're using it, you often wish, oh, I wish I could like get the camera a little bit closer and also still get things in focus. These come in handy. It's called the Proxar or Proxar, however you would like to say it. Live your life the way you see fit. Now you can also use extension tubes and those go between the body and the lens. This goes on the front and they have different ones. You can use them together. You can use them alone, 0.5 meters, one meter and two meters. You just twist it on the front like this. It just helps you so that you can, you know, get a little bit closer when you're shooting. These are nice to have because you can easily fit them in a bag. If you use an extension tube, you deal with it taking up so much room. A lot of them are like this size 
or larger. It's kind of like having something about the size of a lens in your bag. This in a book bag and a little camera bag doesn't take up any room at all. It gets the job done. People say that you can get like a sharper image when you use an extension tube, but you have to deal with putting the extension tube on your camera in a proper order because you can lock up your lens. You can like really mess things up when you're out and about if you forget to do it the right way. And I feel like it's kind of annoying to pick up this tube, take the lens off, put it on the body, put the lens back on and then switch. This you just stick on the front of the lens, super easy. Done. Check out my music. Fight fire with my heart. Make me come apart. I need you out of my brain. Buy, play, stream, hear it now. Now this little thing here is super cool. It is a cold shoe adapter for the Hasselblad. And not a lot of people have talked about this on YouTube, so I kind of wanted to show it. You can twist this. It's really sturdy. It snaps into different positions. It's super small. If you see these on eBay, you would think that it's about the size of this remote or larger, but it's super small. And you just mount it here. I didn't know for the longest time that this was an accessory mount right here for the Hasselblad. I just thought this was where you see the label. You can hear that snap. It locks in. It's on there. I like having this on here. It doesn't take up any room. Like it, it's not this huge thing that's sticking on the side of the camera. You can leave this on all the time. I am planning on shooting more with this camera. So subscribe so you can see the images that I get with this camera, with the different film stocks, with the digital backs, with the film backs. And I have a lot of fun. So subscribe, stay tuned. It's gonna be a fun time. Yes. I didn't mention the hat. It says fame, because I wanna be famous. Just wanna be famous. <laughs> Me. It just looks fun. It just looks inspiring. It looks like I want to go out and capture images. And I'm really a video person. A few years ago, I said I want to get into photography more because if I can take a really good still image and get the lighting right, it will make my cinematography better, my video better, because those are just multiple images together. So if I can really figure out that single image, I can make my multiple images more dynamic. So that was a whole thought process. So I wanna go out and shoot some more things. I wanna get a better eye for light, for composition, for color, all of those things. This is the tool. This is one of the tools that I will be using to shoot some photos. Fun. If this camera shot video too, it would be everything. It would be, this would be, mm, if this could shoot video as well. If this could shoot like, eight millimeter film or super eight film, that would be super cool. But for now, I will be using one of these Osmo pockets and have it attached to the side of the camera. And so I can get my video and I can get my stills at the same time. There is a new digital back for this Hasselblad that shoots video, but you're not able to shoot at 24 frames per second, which is what I like to shoot. And you're not able to shoot and log. As far as I know, maybe they did a firmware update. I'm not sure. Also, I don't think it uses the full sensor size when it's shooting the video. I think it crops in. So it's not like you're shooting medium format video with that new Hasselblad digital back. Watch these videos because, you know, Maybe I'll be able to get that new Hasselblad digital back and I can show you how it works, how it shoots video and photos and compare it to this uh, P20 by phase one here. What accessories do you use with your camera? Let me know. The plan is to post two times a week Monday and Thursday, we'll see. Again, we'll see. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up and do something to the bell, tap it, to turn on those post notifications so you get notified whenever I post a new video. Visit my website, perlin.com, where you can see my art, my store, my 
blog, my clothing, my merch, my music, and all of that good stuff and more. And until next time, take a little time to make art and be brilliant. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Super fun. Slide the dog slide in. Okay, slide in. We're on camera, we're on YouTube, be professional. Be difficult.